Good morning, welcome to the homestead. I wanted to share with you what we have blooming out and budding out on our homestead here in zone 8B in Texas. I also wanna share with you what we've got in the ground so far and how they fared during our last frost. Let's get going. First thing are our blueberries. They are looking great. They had blooms on them before the freeze and it didn't affect them at all. They look fantastic and I'm seeing little berries developed all over these bushes. So that's really exciting. My family loves blueberries, so they are super excited about that. Okay, what do we got here in the garden? Strawberries. You guys know me in strawberries and they do really well in the winter time and they don't mind the cold weather at all. So let's take a look at how they look after the freeze on the last two days. Well, I do need to weed these a little bit, but look, we've got berries, strawberries everywhere. We've got blooms and they are looking good, turning red and they're probably gearing up to be loving this warm weather we've got coming up in the next couple of days. Of course, we've got our garlic that's been in the ground for over six months now. We've got over here, we've got our onions. Those have been in the ground for uh, over a month and a half now. The arugula is in the ground. Arugula does not mind the cold. It doesn't mind a freeze or a frost and it's perfectly fine. You know, I didn't cover up my new Swiss chard plants. We've got the old ones that I transplanted from the greenhouse over here. Those look good. The new ones, they look okay. They'll probably make it, uh, but it seemed to be a little harsh on them the other night. Behind us, we've got fava beans and peas. Don't mind the cold at all. And then we've got beets. And this is the most amount of beets I've ever gotten to uh, germinate come up here on the homestead. I'm super excited about this. Now, I had already transplanted tomatoes out. I know I shouldn't have, but they were getting too big for the house and I just had to get them outside. So I had this makeshift really quick uh, contraption here, this old greenhouse plastic. And I did a double layer with the row covers that I just recently got and put the plastic over it. And I haven't looked under here yet. I know I can keep the frost off these, but it's the freezing that's the problem. So. Let's check it out. Oh, thank the Lord, they are still alive. Look at that, they're not damaged from the freeze at all. They actually look pretty decent. You can start tomatoes pretty quickly and they, they do germinate fast and they do grow pretty quick um, in the house where you or wherever you're starting your seeds, in your greenhouse, whatever. But I had to get them out and uh, they survived this wonderful my potatoes had a problem so potatoes you put in the ground here in mid-february in east texas in zone 8b and um, they took a really hard hit during this freeze these are some beans from last year that had sprouted up and obviously they were totally wrecked during this uh, freeze we had in the last couple of days Hopefully these potatoes here will come back. We've obviously still got viable roots. And so hopefully they'll shake off this, um, this freeze damage on the top of them and come back. But I'm not sure how they're doing underneath. They look pretty decent. There's some serious damage at the top leaves, but it looks like We've got some newer leaves down here that are fine. Hopefully they'll be all right and produce this year. Now you will have to forgive me. I usually forget the variety names of the fruit trees that I buy. Some of them I know, but this one right here, I, I leave the tags on if I can. <laughs> Unfortunately, they break down in the sun and they fall off or the tree grows and they fall off. This is a Shinseki uh, Asian pear and look at it. It is beautiful right now. It's budding out and blooming out pretty much at the same time and I know I'm gonna get a lot of uh, Asian pears off of this, and they do really well here in this area of Texas. And the reason I mentioned variety is not knowing what they are is because this is also an Asian pear and has produced fruit before, but I cannot remember what uh, variety it is. And I, but I do know it's a universal variety, so it, uh, it'll help to pollinate others. And it, it's also self-fruitful. So I'll have to do research and get back to you on that one. So this is a pawpaw and you can see there is some freeze damage on it, but it'll be totally fine. And it's got little fruit on it. So that's really cool. And they don't seem to be uh, harmed 
at all from this freeze. We've got a little Cortland apple here. Now I'm gonna talk about apples in a minute. I've got some serious apple problems here on the property and uh, I'm not sure this one's gonna survive, although it looks okay so far. So our elderberries were rocking and rolling. These were all full of, <laughs> of leaves the other day and uh, buds and they're all budding out and leafing out and that freeze knocked them back pretty good, but I'm not worried about them. They're really tough. They spread really far and fast. I only planted one here originally, and now it's coming up from the roots everywhere. So I've actually got to prune this back a little bit. Now here's where we've got some pretty serious damage. This is a grape from Malta. And I, my friend over at Pete B's Homestead gave this to me, and it was doing beautifully, but it got hit really hard. And it's probably because it's from Malta, they don't get freezes over there. And it's, uh, it's looking pretty rough, but I think it'll come back. And then over here is a kiwi, but it's only the male. So I need another female because every female I plant on the other side keeps dying. But this male is doing okay. I don't know if I'm ever gonna have kiwis, but that's all right, no problem. The thing that does the best, pears. Pears rock and roll in this part of Texas. They do really well. They get some blight, but they kind of shake it off. And yeah, these are our, I'm going to show you my other pears. They're out of control right now. They already have pears on them, which is amazing. But this one isn't blooming out yet. This one's a little far behind the other varieties. This is a Warren pear, a Warren or an Ayers. I think this is the Warren. I have an Ayers and then I have canning pears on the other side. This is an eating pear, more buttery texture, not that gritty texture. Here's another Cortland apple. I hope it makes it. I'm not exactly sure what's gonna happen with it. It's uh, from Grower Solution. They used to actually do uh, fruit trees, which was nice, but they don't do them anywhere and I don't know why. These have done really well, um, but I'm gonna talk about the problem I have with apples on this property. Here's another little yellow delicious apple tree from Grower Solution that I had. Um, it, it's got the problem I'm gonna talk about down at the base, so not sure if that's going to make it at all. Figs took a nasty hit during that freeze, but I think they will be okay. So we can tell that uh, the leaves are all kind of shriveled up here. The leaves took a really nasty hit. This is my Texas Everbearing and but they're they're looking all right the celeste next to it didn't do too well during this winter time but some of it was uh was budding out and fly, or, uh, leafing out hopefully the rest of it does it was only kind of this side over here the trunks themselves look good and i like to grow them in the bush style i don't trim them to a tree style because they do take hard hits in the winter time. Now I know I can wrap them and I've showed people how to wrap them before in the winter. In my opinion, the bush style is better because if you lose your one trunk on your fig to a freeze, then you're starting from the roots all over again. You're probably not going to get any fruit. With the bush style, you have more of, you have a higher probability. You've got many trunks coming up and some of them may freeze, some of them may not. This is, I think, a white Adriatic fig over here, or an Alma. <laughs> See, I can't remember. White Adriatic or Alma, it was also budding out. I think it'll be fine. Um, there's a tiny little bit of freeze damage on it. No problem, it should make it. Apricot looks great, but I've never gotten any fruit off of it, so I've gotta investigate more why that is. Okay. We're coming to my pink lady apple here, and I'm gonna show you the problem. I've dealt with this problem before. I've done videos on it, but it just, I can't get rid of it. And it's really hurting my trees. And that is canker. And this is affecting all my apple trees. It killed two apple trees over on the other property. And this is canker and it gets under and kills off the cambium layer. And it starts on one side and it kind of wraps around. So. If I'm gonna save this tree, I really have to carve back all of this bark all the way down to the middle layers, uh, get the cambium layer off of it. And you can see it's spreading up here and down here. I did take care of it at the bottom years ago and it healed itself back over, but it's starting again. So the only way for me to save this tree would be to cut it off right here because you can see it's starting back up above the wound again. 
and in these spots right here where all the branches meet it's really difficult to to get rid of and these apple trees have very low chill hours so they should produce apples but since i've had so many disease issues with them i never get any apples i had one apple on one tree one time and that's it this is my lsu purple fig and i'm like i'm kind of worried about it actually this is the worst it's ever looked and it hasn't budded out yet although it is usually a late late bloomer or late butter and uh, this is another texas everbearing that i had planted last year and unless it comes back from the roots it took a really nasty hard hit this winter and i hope i don't have to replace it these trees are getting expensive it was 40 dollars for this fig which is pretty nuts but i guess that is what it is nowadays right a tree that doesn't care about anything that takes anything you throw at it is a chinese date or jujube so these are these grow amazingly well i cannot say enough good things about them and yeah they just go no disease no pests no problem here's my poor pink lady she's almost dead it's been here for four years it's still budding out but look at this i had fixed some canker down here before but now it reared its ugly head and it is totally destroying this tree there's I don't think I can save it at all. I left this to come up from the rootstock. I don't know what the rootstock is on this tree, but I'm going to leave it and see what it does. The rest of the tree is still alive, but barely, and it's budding out, but I don't think I'm going to get any fruit off of it or be able to save it at all. So here are my muscadines. These always do well. They are late budding out this year. Here's a little bud right here. One on the trunk that I'll get rid of. Actually, I'll just pinch that off. I've got one up here. I need to fix these saggy wires, but other than that, they're just late this year. Not much going on over here with these, but they will go crazy probably in the next couple of weeks with the warmer weather. Here we go. This is the Ayers pair down here. This one's doing really great. The other one up there is the Warren and no problems at all. Then we've got our black Spanish grapes. These are actually looking good. They didn't take a hit at all because these are made for this area. Unlike that Maltese uh, grape that's up near the garden. And then down here, I am so excited to see this still alive. This is my Champanelle grape. These are touted as being one of the best for the area and uh, by Texas A&M. And it didn't do well last year. It didn't, uh, it didn't grow that much. So hopefully this year I can get it up to the trellis wire. And, but I'm so excited to see that it's still alive. So let's head over to what I call the other property. And that's just because the property was going to be subdivided at one point, and there's a fence down the center of it where the dry creek is. But we bought it all as one property because I wanted that much land. It's almost eight acres, give or take, a little under. Oh, look at all the deer. There's like four or five deer in here. And they're probably eating my pears. Yep, there they go. I took the little barrier fence and I did a bit a video on that before the little barrier down around these fruit trees over here, at least the ones, the smaller ones that were still alive uh, because the deer were nibbling on them and it's just a physical barrier. If they wanted to push it over, they could, it's just a visual and physical touching, you know, that keeps them at bay and it worked for a long period of time, but it kind of broke down and it's this orange construction. Uh, stuff right here and you can see it actually up around another apple that died over there but they are going to get my pears i know it so i'm going to have to put this back up look at this kefir pear this is probably my best pear tree it's uh the oldest pear tree actually the one next to it is the same age and uh, this one is just done, done incredibly well and i've got it pruned out if you can see the shape of it I've got it pruned out just the way I want it because pears will grow straight up. And I'll show you another pear over here that was on the property uh, when we got here and how I really need to continue to work on it. But this one is gorgeous. It has hundreds, 
in hundreds of pairs on it. Look at how many gorgeous pairs are coming in on this tree. And that's just one tiny branch on the entire tree here. And there's still some blooms on it as well. So it's gonna continue to produce new stuff. And these are like right in the line of my new beehives over here. My bees haven't arrived yet. They arrive in April. So we'll get them in here and settled down and it's going to be such a great thing for this orchard and for the bees to have them next to one another. I know I mentioned that it's tough having uh, it out of sight, out of mind, but now I need to, I do need to come over here more, check on the bees, check on the orchard, and um, hopefully they work in harmony with one another, kind of trying to, trying to create this permaculture homestead here where everything is working together. That's the goal. Okay, let's look at this other tree, and I, I don't believe it's a kefir. I can't remember what I bought, to be, <laughs> be honest. That's me again. Not I usually am lazy, and I keep that little tag on the tree, but when they get this big, it disappeared a long time ago, and uh, the sun ate it, essentially. But it looks great, too. And I did have a disease, disease problem on this tree. I can't remember which disease it was, even. That's my terrible memory. But it's doing well, and I've brought it back and uh, it's got some pears on it, not like the other one at all, but it's got some on it. Oh, right here, I'll show you right here. Well, I can say that this branch has, or had blooms on them. I hope they got pollinated um, before the freeze. I do see I've got some little pears here, so that's cool, but not on the rest of the tree as of yet, so I still have hope for it. Okay, now behind me you're going to say this one looks pretty bad and it needs to get pruned. Well, this peach tree here, it used to be a Sam Houston and it died because we have terrible peach tree diseases in this area. The peach orchard not far from my house is no longer a peach orchard. They took out every single tree because they were all diseased and dying and they were sick of spraying them with garbage and having Texas A&M out there every single year trying to figure out what was wrong with them. The peach tree diseases in this area are just rough. And that's no problem. You adapt to where you're at. And I want you to do that. So if you see things that are getting diseased over and over and over again, don't buy another uh, one of those trees. Like I'm not buying any more apple trees because I just can't keep the canker off of them. But the trees like the Asian pears, no problem at all. And I'm gonna buy more of those. So I said this was a Sam Houston before. You can see a ton of blooms on it. This came up from the rootstock. I do not know what kind of uh, rootstock it is or what kind of peach it is. And it's producing another peach tree that's doing okay. So I'm not touching it. I'm just leaving it alone. It had peaches on it last year, but since we had that drought and my water over here, uh, my water line was cut, I wasn't able to give it any water and it dropped all of its fruit. Look at you, you're such a lover. Look at you. What are you doing? You, oh, you want to be pet? Yeah. You want to be pet? You're a good cat. Look at you. So right here we have a Japanese plum. Now, usually plum trees die here as well. They get borer beetles and that one died. I had one in between, that was gone. Um, that one's about to die. It's not even budding out anymore. The one behind us over here is blooming out and it always does, but I never get any fruit off of it. And it's got borer beetles in it as well. And I just cannot treat them fast enough to, to save these trees. I'm just gonna let them go. Uh, this one right here already bloomed out and it's got hopefully some little plums on it. This is a Japanese plum, so it's a little bit different. It doesn't seem to be affected. I don't no notice any borer beetles in this one at all. It's got a lot of blooms. I'm not sure if they were pollinated well. We'll find out. Usually it's got some fruit on it, but not much. So this is the pear tree that was on our property before we got here. I believe it's a Warren pear. They look like Warren pears. They're not that big, but they are very buttery in texture and the flavor is fantastic. We did a video on how to can pears from the pears from this tree right here. If you haven't seen that, click at the top of the screen. This one always produces a ton, but I've got a little more blight that I need to prune out of the tree. I didn't get it fully pruned. I pruned like half of it and I couldn't see, uh, <laughs> it was too dark. So I've got to get back out here and prune the blight out of it and get that taken care of 
and get this a more manageable size because I've had pears like 20 feet in the ground and I wasn't able to even get to them at one point. But this is a really great tree and I'm excited to have it because it does produce some great fruit. That used to be a pink lady there. And this used to be, I think a golden delicious, both died of canker. Not gonna replant there. All right, let's head into the greenhouse because I wanna show you, I've got some germination problems in there and then some ant problems that are causing some issues. So we're back in the greenhouse and it fared pretty well during the freeze. So we've still got blooms on our small Filipino calamansi. It's a little citrus fruit from the Philippines. And we've got two limes next to it over here that are just, this one has so many blooms on it. I don't know how much fruit I'm gonna get on it. If all of those fruited out, the whole thing would just kind of like crash over. So that's a huge blessing. Our banana is still doing well, but unfortunately, since it was so cold this winter, I don't think I'll get fruit from it this year. Oddly enough, we had some lettuce seed in the ground that came up and it went and actually looks like it's gonna bolt really quick, though not that variety. So whatever this variety is, I can't remember. It's just gonna bolt too fast and I'm just gonna pull it out of there. This is going to be eggplant. This is my daughter's bed, so I gave them a small space here to learn and do their own growing. We've got some cilantro, some radishes, and some carrots. And I put them in the same bed as our Nero de Toscana, which is actually getting beat up a little bit by some cabbage moth. And that those collards over there I left because they're both biennials, so they'll grow for two seasons. And that one is getting beat up by aphids. So the tomatoes that I had put here in the greenhouse they're still alive. They're still looking pretty decent, although they're yellowing out a little bit. So I don't have the nutrients correct, especially in this new bed here. Uh, I just put this one in a couple weeks ago to put the tomatoes in so I could grow them up to the center. These are my indeterminates and the Romas and uh, San Marzanos. Then I had some extra lettuce for this area. So I put some lettuce here, got some lettuce back there. And of course the uh, Egyptian walking onions, they, don't care about anything. They just keep going and going and going. I'm afraid one day that I'm gonna have this entire bed full of these Egyptian walking onions. But we've got some Brussels sprouts in here. There's a random bok choy back here. And then we've got some butter crunch lettuce. Nope, sorry, this is summer bib lettuce. So this is a little better for the heat. So if it gets too hot in here really quick, this should not bolt out. Behind it, we've got herbs. We had our coneflower there and it's yet to come back, which is our echinacea. We've got some borage, dill, and some calendula, thyme, and chocolate mint. So this bed right here with the collards is for our peppers or the eggplant. So eggplant goes in one, peppers in the other. It really doesn't matter which one. I need to get those out now because they're struggling in the house in the small pots that I have them. They germinated really well this year and they're growing tall and I had to wait till that freeze was done because they can't stand the cold temperatures at all. So I'm gonna get those out here today and get those in the ground today because we should have some nice warm temperatures. Today is the very last day of our, our frost warning, our freeze, our last frost of the season. So we should be past that. And that freeze happened last, not last night, two nights ago and the night before, and it was about 30 to 31 degrees. I'm having a really difficult time with my carrot germination this year that's really spotty and really terrible. And as you can see in the center, I've got an issue with some fire ants. So I did knock them down, but I suspect that they're still in here. Oh, well, maybe not. I'll check around the edge here. I see a couple, but not many. But they really disturb the carrots, but that doesn't make up the, for the excuse of uh, why they're not germinating, because I'm not sure. So I'm gonna probably reseed these, and they should be fine. Over here, we've got some broccoli and some spinach. So I'm having some spotty germination on the spinach as well. And some random carrots from last year, some random beets from last year, and this little collard that, or kale that I transplanted that of course has aphids on it. The cabbage over there looks great. I'm just gonna leave that alone. Cabbage is in already, they're looking good. Bok choy is over here and also terrible germination. No germination on that spinach over there. 
and my Mizuno, which is a Japanese mustard that's supposed to be amazing for you. I've got terrible germination on it. So I've only gotten one, and I planted so many of these seeds, two, three, four, maybe five, um, five or six little plants that came up out of probably a hundred. And then honestly, I can't remember if this is a weed or not, or if it's a flower that came over from that bed. It, sort of looked like echinacea when it started but maybe it isn't and that one I can't remember what that is <laughs> but they are in the back half of this bed with my other tomatoes and these tomatoes actually look pretty decent these are cherry tomatoes nope sorry they're not cherry tomatoes these are cherry tomatoes over here and these are homestead and these are celebrity tomatoes same ones we have out in the garden then I did transplant one of my raspberries into a pot and that's doing pretty well right now. I hope you've enjoyed the tour of our homestead. If you have any questions about any of our fruit trees or anything that we've got going on here in our zone, in our area, leave them for me in the comment section below. Now go click on this video right here, which is our full playlist on how we built that greenhouse by ourselves. Have a beautiful blessed day. See you next time.